Thanks, Brother Eric. Morning, church. Morning. It's a privilege to stand here and speak from the Lord. Amen. Can we bow and pray? Heavenly Father, you are holy and you are with us. We trust in you, O oh God. We believe that this morning you're going to speak to us. We believe that this morning people with problems, O oh God, will find solutions. We believe that through your word, miracles will take place. For you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. To you will be all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, and the people of God say, Amen. Amen. First of all, I would like to thank God for this opportunity to stand and minister it's a, at the same time also a great responsibility. I also would like to thank the leadership of the church, Pastor Don Vivas, as well as from Eunice and everybody else. As we all know, December is declared Ebenezer in our church. Ebenezer, we are saying this far. The Lord has been with us. Ebenezer came from the time the people of Israel were victorious against the Philistine in 1 Samuel. And then the prophets, as an act of acknowledging what the Lord has done, he built a stone and called it Ebenezer. It was an act of acknowledging God's victory. It was an act of acknowledging God's goodness. It's very, very important that as we live, despite the challenges we might go through, it's good to sometimes pause a bit, realize how good the Lord has been to us and give him thanks. Amen. So we're going to continue in that same thinking. And this morning, we'll be talking about the power of thanksgiving. The power of thanksgiving. I'm so grateful to God that I and Father never met, but he has somehow introduced a bit my topic. This is to confirm that the Holy Spirit is in our midst and God is going to greatly bless us. Amen. Amen. Last Sunday, Pastor Elijah spoke about endurance and discipline as our receipt for life. And the book of Hebrews 12, 1 to 2 was read. Sometimes in Christian life, not everything will come spontaneously. We need to learn to work on things. We need to learn to put efforts. We need to learn to be disciplined so that God can meet us, so that we can experience more of God's goodness. And also in that Bible verse that was read in Hebrew 1 to 2, it says that we should remove anything that can hinder us from seeing the fullness of God. Among others, stuff like sins. We should make efforts with the power of the Holy Spirit to get away with it, remain focused, be endurance, be disciplined, work hard so that we can bear fruit as Christians. Amen. Amen. So today, we'll be focusing on giving thanks. Our text is found in Psalm 103, from verse 1 to 2, in the New King James Version. It reads, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. David is having a conversation with his soul. David, when you read his story, 
He went ups and down. He had moments of glory, he had moments of what you can say darkness. But still, he is speaking to his soul to remember God's goodness. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Forget not all his benefits. This is December time whereby many people would sit back, look at what were the goals for the year, and see what they achieved. That can be done individually, that can be done as a corporate in the company. But while doing that, you will find that I figured to realize that Sister Lomasun has got, uh, just got a PhD. It's an achievement. We praise God for that. Amen. But when also you look, there will be other stuff that you wanted to do, but God did not allow it to happen. Still, we should remember to always give Him thanks. Because it's very, very important. Thanksgiving, in fact, is acknowledging God's mighty deeds and thanking Him for that. So when we say we're giving thanks to God, we are indeed acknowledging Him as the author of our lives, as the one who gives us even this great thing that we have. Sometimes, as we drive on road, that I've experienced twice this year. You are headed back and you see just accident happening and car being smashed away. But you look at yourself, God has protected you. That doesn't mean we are better than those people. It's just by the grace of God. Amen. And it also happens in our career that you are talking to a patient, nicely so, but for some reason, Something just goes dramatically wrong and the person dies. What does it mean? Is that person as bad as you can be? No. God has protected us because He still has plans, He still has things to do in our lives. So, no matter what you might have gone through, either great success, either infringement, high levels in your businesses, Either something didn't work, we should learn to thank God in everything we do, for His good indeed. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, in the New Living Translation says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. And thank Him for all He has done. Pray about everything. Tell God what you need. So while doing that, we should also remember to give thanks to Him for what He has already done. Thanksgiving to God, in fact, it set us for the next step of favor in our lives. In the Amplified Version 3, do not be anxious or worried about anything. But in everything, every circumstance and situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific requests known to God. What is it that is worth you? Is it about the fees for next year? Is it about your health? Is it about the next level that you have to take in your business? Despite all those challenges, we should know that God is in control. That God's plans for our lives are good. He has said that He has plans to prosper us and not to harm us. He has planned to give us hope and great future. This is the time as Christians we remember about Jesus, we remember about Christmas. That is the biggest reason why our hearts should always pour into the presence of God with thanks. Because through Jesus, you and I are called today children of the Most High God. Through Jesus Christ, our sins.
sins are forgiven through Jesus Christ, we can call upon the Lord with boldness and heavy expectation that He's going to answer us. Jesus is the reason for the season. We should not be too much involved in the commercialization of this season. I must say we should buy gifts for people, but what I'm trying to say is we should remember that this December time we remember Jesus because it's through him that we became children of God. It's through him that we can enjoy the protection of God everywhere we are in everything we do. So I'm going to talk to you about the benefits of thanksgiving. As we praise God, as we give Him thanks, what are some of the benefits? It's not everything, but some of the benefits that you can enjoy by doing so. The first one is that thanksgiving gives us access to the God, to God's presence. Access to God's presence. There is nothing greater in life than a human being carrying God's presence wherever he is. That means God will always be on your side. The word of God says, if God is for us, who can be against us? God is a loving father. He longs to have a deeper relationship with us. Thanksgiving and praise, sometimes they overlap, but that is one of the key into God's presence. And when we speak about God, God in the church, this is a global concept that you can experience everywhere you are and in everything we do. God's presence is crucial. Psalm 100, 4 to 5. In the Amplified Version, it reads, Enter this gate with a song of thanksgiving, and his God with praise. Be thankful to him. Bless and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy and loving kindness are everlasting. His faithfulness in charge to all generations. For the Lord is good. His faithfulness endures forever. So when we give thanks, when we praise God, we attract, in fact, His presence. And this can be very important in our lives. Access to God's presence through thanksgiving. The other benefits of thanksgiving is access to divine supply. Amen. Amen. It's the will of God for you and I to live an abundant life. John chapter 10 verse 30 says, I have come so that you might have life and have it in abundance. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Whatever he has said in his word, it's for us to experience and enjoy it and give more thanks to him. Mark 6, 41 to 42. We all know about this miracle of multiplication of bread and fish that Jesus did during his time on earth to feed the multitude that were following him. So I'm going to read and we'll see what might have triggered that miracle that we were to us. Verse 41, it says, Taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing of praise and thanksgiving to the Father. Then he broke the loaves and repeatedly gave them to the disciples to set before the people. And he divided up to the two fishes among them all. They all ate and were satisfied. Amen. Amen. So the miracle of multiplication was preceded 
by a thanksgiving prayer from our Lord Jesus. Amen. So if you want to experience abundance, if you want to experience more of God's divine supply, we have to learn how to stop sometimes and give Him thanks. Jesus is our whole model. He did it as an example for us to follow. Thanking Him is very important. I know in the United States, the last Thursday of November, every year, they have a national public holiday of thanksgiving. Amen. Yes. No wonder why the United States is super powerful. Every year, the last Thursday of each year, it's a thanksgiving day. From the ancient time, the idea was to remember God's harvest and give Him thanks. I know now with politics and everything, the idea might not be the same, but Christian communities, Christian leaders are still taking that day seriously and give thanks to God for what He has done in the United States. And this is crucial. So Jesus did that and a miracle happened. There were multiplication, He fed the people were following Him, and there was even an overflow. May God help us and always remember giving Him thanks and let the overflow from God be our portion in the name of Jesus. The Word of God is true. The Word of God taken into practice will always produce fruit. Amen. So as we move on, the other benefits of giving thanks to God or giving praise to God it says, Thanksgiving can be our weapon for deliverance. Our weapon for deliverance. If you feel oppressed, if you feel under demonic influence, stand up, praise, give thanks to God, things will happen in your life. We can read that in the book of Acts 16, 25, 26 from the new King James Version. It reads, But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, can someone say, Suddenly? Suddenly, suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prison was shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosened. Amen. Amen. Suddenly a miracle happened through praise and thanksgiving. If you feel under demonic power, if you feel under demonic attack, wake up at night, stand up, sing hymns, praise God, deliverance will come. To Peter, Jesus said, You are the rock, and upon you I will build my church, and the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. So even if the devil wants to use his strongest power, the prophecy of Jesus upon his church remains forever. We should always remember to remind the devil that he cannot do anything against us because we belong to Jesus, because a prophecy was said upon us that the gate of hell shall not prevail against us. It doesn't matter how many they might be, it doesn't matter how strong they can be, but God has the supreme power. And if God is for us, nothing can be against us. It is very important as Christians to always have our own moment of meeting with the Lord in awkward hours. I'm not saying you should pray during the day, it's very important. But if you want things to happen, you must develop a culture to wake up while you are sleeping and seek for God's face. Things will happen. People will see you and give glory to God. For miracles will be your portion. Amen. Amen. Thanksgiving through 
specific time is important. When you read Exodus 12 about the deliverance of the people of Israel, it happened during the night. Amen. So there is a mystery with praising God, worshiping Him at night, as far as deliverance is concerned. Amen. Thanksgiving also bring supernatural strength and great anointing upon us. Supernatural strength and great anointing. Supernatural strength and great anointing are needed. When you are a child of God, you are not a normal person. God is expecting you to operate on a supernatural level. You cannot be a child of God and things are still as normal as anybody else know. Something is not doing well. That is why God is helping us to understand these things, put them into practice, and see His glory as we trust Him. Psalm 92, verse 1 to 2, verse 1 to 3, it reads, It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to the Most High. It is good to proclaim your unfailing love in the morning, your faithfulness in the evening, accompanied by a dance string instrument, a harp, and a melody of a lyre. Verse 10. But you have made me as strong as a wild ox. You have anointed me with the finest oil. My eyes have seen the downfall of my enemy. May God make you see the downfall of your enemies in the name of Jesus. My ears have heard the defeats of my wicked opponents. But the godly will flourish like a palm tree and grow stronger like a cedar of Lebanon. For they are planted in the Lord's own house. They flourish in the court of our God. Even in old age, they will still produce fruit. They will remain vital and green. They will declare, the Lord is just. He is my hope. There is no evil in him. Even in old age, God will make you to be fruitful. God will make you to be strong and anointed. It is written in the book of Isaiah that those who wait upon the Lord, they will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get weary. They will walk and not faint. God wants to put his anointing, his strength upon you so that even if you want to go extra mile in your business, even if you want to go extra mile in your studies, you have the extra strength from God that will make a difference between you and your peers. That is done through thanksgiving. And it is the very will of God for us to experience more of His strength. More if you want to see your prayer being answered. Among other things that might have been preached, among other things that are in the Word of God, we should learn to pause and give thanks to God. Again, we saw this in the life of our Master, Jesus Christ, when he was told about the death of his beloved friend, Lazarus. He took his own time to come and respond to the call. God is never late. God is never late. God is always on time. Pray the Lord of God. Amen. Jesus took him, took his own time to come and respond to the call to rescue his best friend. John 11, 40 to 42, in the Amplified Version, it reads, Jesus said to her, to Martha, 
Did I not say to you that if you believe in me, you will see the glory of God, the expression of his excellence? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his high toward heaven and said, Father, I thank you. Jesus was very smart. He knew how to touch God's heart. Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me and listen to me. But I've said this because of the people standing around, so that they may believe that you have sent me and that you have made me your representative. Father, I thank you. Praise the name of the Lord. Jesus started his prayer by thanking God. Jesus knew that as you do that, you are attracting God's power into your life. You are attracting God's intervention quicker through thanksgiving. So if he did it, it was an example for us to follow. And we all know what happened thereafter. Lazarus came back to life. Amen. So those things that you might have lost, those ideas that might have gone, through thanksgiving, may the Spirit of the Lord bring them back to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. May God resurrect everything in your life that you have lost so that you can keep on giving him praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thanksgiving. 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 Thanksgiving can be done through prayers. Thanksgiving can be done through a specific offering that you decide in your heart to do. But as long as it's done according to God's will, it pleases God and it can attract His intervention in your life. So, as I am about to conclude, may I call the worship team to come at the front. What is our take home message? Thanking God should be part of our daily living. No matter the circumstances or adversities we might face, things might be great, challenges might come around, but what we are saying is in each and every circumstance, we should learn to give thanks to God. For it is good to give thanks to God. First Thessalonians 5, verse 18, it reads, In everything, no matter what the circumstances, be thankful and continually give thanks to God. For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. In every circumstances, every time, we are requested to always give thanks to the Lord because that is the will of God for us. As we are concluding this message, I would like to decree and declare upon your life that may God's presence be your portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. As you engage your heart into a culture of thanksgiving, I decree and declare may the provision of heaven be your portion in the name of Jesus. As we develop a culture of acknowledging God's Almighty, may His presence, may His great anointing be yours every day and forever in the name of Jesus. As we praise and thank God, may He always hear you. May He answer your prayers according to His will. May God be glorified and may the people of God praise Him, clap our hands and thank Him. Thank you, Jesus. So the worship team is going to lead us.
us into a moment of prayer as we respond to the word of God and thereafter we will continue.
clothes. If you are here, you have never taken officially a decision to give your life to Jesus. This is an opportunity that God is giving you. If you are here, you are saying deep within your heart that you want this Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. It's not about church, but it's about a relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus. If you want to give your life to Jesus and you know from deep within you that you've never done it before, or if you want to renew your commitment with our Lord Jesus, may you please raise your hand where you are. We just want to see and pray with you. We just want to encourage you. And this will be the biggest ever decision you might make into your life. Yes. We can do better than that. And we are grateful to Dr. Kamanchi for allowing the Lord to speak for you. Let's just acknowledge and appreciate you have spoken to us and reminded us about the power of thanksgiving. Sometimes we forget. It's very easy for the soul to forget, especially when things are tough.